and we are rolling. Physics 252. 252? Yes. Oh, okay. okay. I don't think I asked. I have to pencil back at the end. Nope. Years ago, I did have a class with two people with the same first and last name. One of them had a middle name, but he always, both of them always signed your first name, last name. I hope I gave them the right grades. <laughs> it's possible they were reversed. small little hallway off to the right. It's the first hallway off to the right. And then Michael will be right there. It's the one that's not the closet. <laughs> it's sketchy it. alley. What's that? It's a sketchy alley. Dark alley. Yeah. 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 Bring a bodyguard. <laughs> Information on the syllabus should be correct. And I think for that, um, the some administrivia. In order to see most of the course, you need to do at least one attempt at the course entry assignment. So has anybody, no one had done it when I checked about an hour and a half ago. So yeah, I looked at it last night and I couldn't find any of the links that, you know, there's instructions to go to assignments and course entry and then you didn't have the assignment tab up. I think but it was closed until 8 a.m. this morning. So yeah, you shouldn't have been able to see it until 8 a.m. Okay, we, okay. we were told, don't let them see it before it's opened up for them. Sounds good. Well, yeah, I was looking for it, but I couldn't find it last night. Yeah, I couldn't either. Yeah, you should not have been able to see it last night, so that's a good sign. You should be able to see it now. And if you look and don't see it now, then I have stuff somewhere. But you have to do at least one attempt in order for most of the course to show up. Also, labs. Technically, this is lab time that we meet with for lab twice a week. Uh, I view this as we've got basically a three hour block. I can do whatever I want in it. So we'll do lab some weeks and we'll do class other weeks. But there's not enough time in these two times a week to cover all the course material. 
and new labs. So it is, I am assuming that you are re watching the videos and going through the coursework at, in the appropriate chapter. And the first lab, let's go back and forth. I, I like the lab when it works, but it's really frustrating sometimes. So the first lab is going to be the Coulomb's Law lab. And it is due a week from today. And the way that you're gonna do it is you're going to watch my doing the video, or my doing the lab on the video. So I don't think you have access to it yet until you do at least one attempt at the course entry assignment. And so then you will see the procedure slash lab and all that stuff, the analysis questions and so forth, and there should be a PD, uh, sorry, Excel document where you will put in data and results. What I'm expecting from you in one week is the PDF and the Excel. Excel will have to be submitted online. I guess you could print it out, but may as well submit it online. The PDF can be handed in or submitted online. If you want to convert, no, let's keep it like that. So the PDF and the Excel spreadsheet. Uh, as you get into it, you'll see it. And then if you have questions, please ask. Uh, words of advice from people who, I guess, from you four? Watch the videos, honestly. It's a lifesaver. There you go. That's it. That, that's the only advice. For that's you. my only advice. Hey. I, I never know. had you, but when I was taking Sassin, I just watched a lot of your videos throughout the whole semester. So. Ah. You had Sassin? I thought you had Carter. So you've seen the just the, the high quality. I've um, seen yep, I've seen a lot. Of, I, I think that format is good. I mean, you just camera down, writing down, explaining what you're doing. There's nothing that's really good. What was that one video with the big band? It was like oh, that was one of the the forced ones where it yep, did. Uh, yep. It was something with a copyright violation. <laughs> I like the way YouTube deals with it, though. You know, it's that we're not going to ban your site, but someone else is going to get money for this. And sure. <laughs> I'm trying to remember the name of the music. It'll come to me two in the morning. I'll call it chicken. Thanks. Any questions before we actually begin on content? The 90% rule is that you use little q for a single charge and a capital Q for a collection of charges. But I don't necessarily hold fast to that, but that's in textbooks typically a single a lowercase q is a single charge, like proton electron. Whereas capital Q would be a collection of them, as I just said. All right, so I'm assuming most of you have had chemistry of some sort in your past, and you've dealt with charges, things being. So tell me, what's a charge? Uh, like a negative, a something without a, an extra uh, electron, or something with more elect a neutron or protons over electron. W. All right, so. You came in with the chemistry, and I was like, trying to yeah, yeah, no, that was very chemistry answer. Um, but what is charge? 
you seem to outline that there seem to be two different types. It's, it's like a, something out of equilibrium. Meaning? Meaning it's trying to balance itself out to have an equal number of, in this case, if there's like protons and uh, electrons, like it's trying to balance out. To, like that's All right, so what I'm hearing is we're coming out with some rules about charge. So let's start there then, and then we'll actually try to get back to what is charge. All right, so this balancing out thing, what, what, rules, what rules are there around charge? The valence electrons. Pardon? Uh, for there to be equal, we have to balance the valence electrons. What? Oh, we're, we're talking about charges, right? Like positive, negative. And there's a third kind. Neutron, like ne neutral. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we got three types, or three types: positive, negative, and neutral. What I'm hoping is that you'll take your knowledge of chemistry and extend it as opposed to keep giving examples with molecules or atoms. That's the hope. I, I mean, typically when I think of charge, I think of like some sort of positive force. Um, maybe, I, would, it, would it be fall under like a, would a volt be considered a charge? A what? A volt, voltage? No, that is it's not a charge. Okay. <laughs> we will eventually connect charge to that, but that's okay. not a charge. That's where my mind wants to go, but I don't know where. Think of a magnet, but I mean, it's very. I I don't. Uh, what specifically are you looking for me to say? What do we? What do you know about charges? I mean, you talked about sort of balancing out. That heard positive and negative attract. Okay, there we go. Opposites attract. And if you apply to that, the same uh, repel each other. All right, so that, that's a rather critical thing that some students seem to forget at times. All right, so let's let's put it in terms of chemistry. What do you, what carries a negative charge? Electrons. And positive charges? Protons. And neutral charges? Neutrons. Okay. What else has a neutral charge? A proton and an electron, one and one. Oh, uh, together? I guess, yeah. If I have a proton and an electron together where they don't go smashing into each other, uh, so it's, suppose we got an orbit, um, what do we call that? So I got a proton here and I got an electron that's going around. Would that be a valence electron? Pardon? Wouldn't that be a valence electron? Uh, that would be a valence electron, but what is the whole thing called? Yeah. What kind? Is it a photon? Hydrogen? It's not a photon. Although a photon would have answered the question earlier of something with a neutral charge. Hydrogen? Yeah, it's a hydrogen atom. Where's the neutron? Yeah, where's the neutron? Where would it be? Next to the proton. Say it again? Next to the proton. Why? Because uh, it goes in the nucleus. <laughs> Why? It's uh, a great question. I've well, okay. been told that from a very young age. So we could have been lied to. That's, what that's the, possible. That's what the wolves told me. Excellent. At least you had some educated wolves raising here. All right, so we have these various charges here. Um, let's go back to, since we've sort of danced around what, what has charge, and we've talked about the opposites of tracks and like repels, and there's three types. What is charge? Energy transfer? Isn't it considered some buzzwords though? Pardon? Isn't it considered a force? No. Is it 
property that makes things have a force? Or like ah, a force? that's a lot closer to it. Ultimately, what is charge? Uh. But it seems to be some property of objects, of, of matter, which has various characteristics, which we sort of outlined right here. So if I have objects with a charge, they might attract, repel, or a couple other things that we'll talk about during the course. So we're not really going to address what a charge is, but just recognize this is sort of an unknown, and we sort of pretend that we know what it is, just like an electron. We will pretend that we know what an electron is. But electrons get really, really strange. Let's talk about the strange, uh, strangeness of electrons. Just a brief side note here. I got a double slit here and I got a wall over here. So if an electron hits the wall over here, it will shine brightly. I have a detector here. I'm gonna send one electron through at a time and I have a detector to know whether it goes through this part or not, whether it goes through this slit or not. So when I do that, I get a bunch of electrons here. I get a bunch of electrons there. That makes sense. I'm shooting objects at this double slit. Some will go through that slit. Some will go through that slit. Now, I do the same experiment, except this time I remove the detector. I don't know which slit it's going to go through. And I shoot electrons, one at a time, at this. And what happens is, The electrons will go through, they're gonna hit the wall, they're gonna light up or whatever indicator we have for something hitting it. Most of the electrons are gonna hit there in the middle. Then we're gonna have some here and then some here and then it's gonna sort of fade off as we go. This is the Davison-Germer experiment. Davison got a Nobel Prize for it. But electrons get kind of funky here when you start dealing with it. The fact that I have a detector makes it look like a particle, but if I don't have a detector there, it looks like a wave. So electrons, we will pretend they're sort of like particles until potentially the end when we get in, if we have time to do quantum, probably won't. But if we do, we'll get into sort of our best guess about what's going on here. Is that a stretch or a question? I was wondering, so is that where they're piling up at? Yeah, so basically you shoot the electron at it, you've got some screen over here, which let's just say it scintillates when the electron hits it, a, a light will show up. So you're gonna get a light here, and then maybe one here, then here, then here, here. And basically you get a whole bunch of them lighting up sort of in this middle. It's like a histogram sideways histogram. So most of the ones are going to hit either here or here. So that's that's just representing where they hit at. Yes. And up here, it hits differently. Is this specifically a weird thing about electrons, or is this just... It is not specific to electrons. So it's just any particle, or a bunch of particles on that one side. Yep. Um, in theory, I could do bowling balls at the slit and the same thing would show up. But the bigger the mass is, the less you're gonna see this. Uh, we'll get into the quantum physics here. But, uh, so generally tiny particles are where we're gonna see it. So that's why we do electrons. And just, your side name? Not sure. Yeah. Gray. Okay. Other questions right now before we continue with our physics? The chapter 23 stuff. All right, so what I have here is an electroscope. I'm hoping that you can see the two strips of, I believe it's aluminum, kind of dangling there. Uh, I guess 
Kayla, you've got probably the worst angle from over there. Can you see it? And I don't think the angle's as bad here, but I can see it. Okay, so PJ. PVC pipe. And rabbit fur. I think I do say this in one of the videos, but if you are concerned about the rabbits, uh, the rabbits, after they gave up their fur, are now living on a farm in a very warm climate. So the rabbits were harmed when you're making up this demonstration. So basically I'm wrapping the rabbit fur against the PVC pipe, and this is an insulator. That's an important word there. This is an insulator, so that means that the electrons getting onto it are basically going to stick. Wherever the electron gets wiped off, it's going to stick to it. And you can actually see the hair sticking to it as well, because these rabbit pelts are probably decades old. So what I'm doing is I'm rubbing electrons from the rabbit fur onto the PVC. Now I take this charged PVC and I bring it closer to there. And what's happening? The metal strips are separating? Yeah. When I take it away, they go back. What happened? Keeping this in mind right here. The charge from the pipe was transferred to the, what's it called? The electroscope. Yeah. Probably not much. You created a small magnetic. Ooh, let's stay away from the word magnetic yeah. for a while. <laughs> That's chapter 30. <laughs> Created a small displacement. Yeah, but what caused that displacement? The wire strips are negatively charged, and since electrons are negatively charged, they repel. Keep going. And that's as far as I got. Okay. <laughs> Why? All right. So they repelled down there. Those two little the leaves repelled. What would cause them to repel? Same charge. Okay. So why is there a same why was there a same charge on it when I, I didn't actually touch the PVC to the top? What would cause there to be the same charge? Because right now they don't seem to be apart. 